Talmente omnes, bene venisis ad saturam lancem, odie pellicula erit satis mira, quia non sum sola, sum cum Alexandro, neque latine sed anglice excipietur pellicula. Uh, so I switch to English now. Okay, uh, thank you. <laughs> I welcome Alessandro. Hi, thank you Alessandro very much, Irene. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I studied la Latin, but uh, I cannot speak very well. So <laughs> it's better in English if you if you'd like. <laughs> it's strange because we are both Italian. We are going to yeah, tell you something are. about Alessandro. But we are <laughs> in English, so you can understand hopefully. Yeah, it's very awkward to speak English with some someone who I know speaks Italian. <laughs> we speak Italian yeah. all the time. And now, <laughs> okay, in front of the camera, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> So I, I wanted just to uh, tell you how this all started, this collaboration, mm -hmm. and also my um, how I knew Alessandro. I stumbled upon uh, one of his videos because he's going to tell you he's a YouTuber too, and uh, yeah. uh, he has a much bigger channel than mine. And um, he is a popularizer, popularizator, I think uh, that's the word yeah. in English, about... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, learning, learning methods, and uh, uh, he, he also has video courses for university mm -hmm. and high school students to help them learn better in a yeah. really effective way, not the, uh, because, you know, you can find anything <laughs> yeah. online. Anything on the internet, yeah. <laughs> his quality is really outstanding, so I will put um, the, the link to his channel in the description. And uh, even if you don't know Italian, I recommend uh, have a look at uh, you his know, channel. Actually, there's a lot of people um, that that said to me, I'm, learn I'm trying to learn Italian with your videos. So <laughs> evidently, I, I speak maybe well enough to be understood with, uh, you know, subtitles and so Yes, yeah. it's you, you speak in a clear way. So if you are thinking about uh, learning Italian too, <laughs> that's after a good reason to learn and um, and also at the same time uh, learn about uh, interesting uh, subjects because <laughs> he makes videos about uh, almost anything, but <laughs> related to uh, knowledge, learning, uh, yeah. sometimes biographies of uh, famous yeah, yeah, yeah. people of the past. Yes, and, and cognitive science, sciences. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's it. And mm -hmm. so I stumbled upon one of his videos um, that was titled something like How to Study uh, Latin and Greek and How to yes. Translate Those Languages. And mm -hmm. uh, I watched it, and I confess that in the beginning I didn't <laughs> expect much because usually when uh, people and uh, Italians <laughs> Um, talk about these about the translations in um, translating in particular. Mm -hmm. um, I, I usually expect them to talk about uh, using the dictionary and the translating yeah. uh, word for word and memorizing, you know, rosa rosa. Ros. Yes, <laughs> but Alessandro, yeah. even if he isn't a, a Latin teacher. Um, gave some really amazing insights, so that's how I <laughs> got to know him. And uh, I think uh, um, what what he says in that video is very valuable. So we will discussing about uh, it yeah. again now. So, now, yeah. And so, Alessandro, yeah. I want you. I want to ask you first uh, mm -hmm. to tell you tell uh, my audience what you do online. Mm -hmm. if you have to add something and also to talk about your own experience with latin as a, mm -hmm. an italian student yeah yeah definitely so uh, my main goal uh, on the internet but also in my activity i have a I have a company and uh, we uh, teach other people how to learn properly and using uh, neuroscience and uh, cognitive sciences sciences uh, so we focus on methods that are uh, proven and uh, we try to teach students, uh, but, but also, you know, uh, workers who want to, um, you know, learn something new, learn a new language or learn uh, programming or whatever. And we teach them how to uh, do it effectively, uh, rapidly, but more importantly, uh, with a high quality in mind. So we're not focused on, you know, speed. Everything is speed on the internet when we talk about learning. 
And uh, yeah, of course, we, we will try to learn faster, but uh, we focus especially on the better part. So we want to learn better, of course, faster, but also the quality is what really, really uh, matters to me and, and to us. So that's my that's my idea. So and science also um, is very important to me. A lot of pseudoscience on the Internet about learning a lot of scams and stuff. And uh, we try to bring back science into the teaching of uh, learning and uh, how to learn effectively. So that's that's our goal. And uh, about Latin, I, I have to confess, I was a really, really bad uh, Latin student. Um, so I in Italy, there's um, a specific type of uh, high school called uh, Liceo Classico. And um, is the type of high school where you learn about uh, ancient history, you learn about uh, Greek and Latin and philosophy and, and other. And so I, I did that type of high school. And so I had to learn Greek and Latin how to, um, but crucially, not to speak in Latin and Greek, but to translate um, texts from authors in Latin and Greek. And so that's what I learned, and I learned it very poorly. So I, I, I didn't like it, um, and, um, and I was a very bad, bad translator. And the thing is, what I realized that later I studied in university, I studied uh, linguistics. So I'm a linguist, and that's why even if I don't know how to speak Latin properly, and I'm not a Latin teacher, I was able to do a video uh, that you found uh, useful uh, because I used my knowledge as a linguist. And as a linguist, it's uh, quite clear that if you want to learn any language, uh, you know, alive or dead, uh, it's, there's no difference. You have to speak, you have to write, you have to read, you have to listen, you have to use the language. Um, a language is a, is a construct, is a device for communication. That's what, uh, what it is. Uh, language is a is technology uh, really is a technology to communicate and if you don't use it to communicate it's nearly impossible to learn it and uh, i tested this theory against the the classical you know grammar learning you have to do exercises and i tested it once i tried to i, I bought um, a turkish grammar manual and i was able to do all the different um exercises and I don't know a single word of Turkish without using the dictionary because you, you just have it's to like solving a puzzle. Yeah, you, you yeah it is. Yes, yeah. crosswords. That, that's that's the thing. It's a uh, it's Sudoku. And it, I don't know anything about Turkish, anything, but I can I can do proper proper exercises uh, of Turkish grammar because it's not learning a language that way. You're, you're not learning anything. You're just um, exercising your critical ability of learning a rule, a set of rules, but it's a game. It's not learning language. If you want to learn properly something uh, like, a, like a language, you have to use it, immerse in it. Also, memory has a good part in it. So uh, memorizing vocabulary is very important. I, I like the use of um, mnemonic techniques to learn uh, new vocabulary, but learning vocabulary is not the same as learning the language. You know, there's a lot of, um, memory gurus out there saying, you know, you, you can learn 30 new um, words a day. And so in one month, you have 900, 1000 words, and that's it. You know the language. That's not it. <laughs> Knowing words is important, but it's not uh, the same as uh, saying, I know the language, I can use it. So only proper use can make a difference. Yeah, thank you. So you're, you had the typical Italian experience yeah. with uh, Latin teaching. So it was taught as a dead language. And yes. uh, um, understandably, you didn't develop such a passion. <laughs> anything, <laughs> anything, I don't know anything. I don't remember anything. And I didn't like it at all. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. However, in that video, I mentioned, you mentioned Oerberg and uh, his books yeah. um, mm -hmm. that I, I'm sure many of my um listener listeners know and mm -hmm. i wanted to ask you how come you know that book <laughs> yeah so personally? wait a second because i came prepared okay 
Let's see. I also have the book here. I don't know if he's going to show it. Yep. However, <laughs> so, <I have> it. <laughs> of course, Great. of course. So, so the thing is, um, I was, uh, so uh, to develop what it is uh, today, my, uh, my, my work, my job uh, as to teach other people how to learn. I was always in the last 10 years, I was always interested in new ways of learning basically anything. And so, uh, so I, I would like to tell you a fancy story about how I came up uh, about uh, Erberg and his method. But the truth is, I was um, searching for books on learning on Google, <laughs> and I stumbled upon it. And I, and I came across the Wikipedia page for Erberg. I, I saw uh, he was a linguist. And me as a linguist, I, I was uh, immediately hooked. Because a, um, a switch in, in my brain uh, clicked at that moment because I, I said, of course, why not um, using a method developed by a linguist that is used to um, study proper languages, uh, alive languages, and apply the same basic uh, ideas uh, to dead languages or uh, so they are called. And so the reading the Wikipedia page, I was uh, already convinced because um, it's strange, but it just makes sense. Uh, if you know how language works, and I studied it, I, I graduated in it, there's no, there's no question that uh, the Erberg method is the only way to properly learn Latin and Greek, uh, because it is. It's, it's, it's as simple as th that's how it works. That's how the brain works. So um, I learned a lot in all, all those years of study about um, cognitive structures and how the brain process information. And it's uh, clear as day that the only way to learn properly Latin and Greek is the Herber method. So, um, and once I told um, a friend of mine who is a Latin and Greek teacher at school in Italy, I told about Herberg and he said to me, well, so you're saying Every, every teacher in Italy uh, uh, is making a mistake. And I said, yes, that's what I'm saying. Every single one of them is making a mistake because uh, Erberg just made sense. So I bought the, uh, so long short story short, I bought the, the books, I read them. Uh, I was already convinced, but they convinced me even more. And since then, that, that's happened maybe seven years ago or something like that. Um, since then, I've always uh, tried to promote the Orber method um, with students. Of course, it's not my job. I don't teach Latin. So, uh, but but as a communicator, as a um, you know a popularizer of uh, science and uh, correct ways to learn things, I think it's my duty to uh, you know speak about this method that is. It's at the same time, it's revolutionary. And at the same time is the most basic stuff ever. So yeah. you, if you want to learn a language, you have to use it as a language. That's, that's it. So it, it's revolutionary, but it's also very, very simple. So I, I love it. And that's strange because in Italy, at least we all, always refer to our Italian method of teaching classics as the traditional one, oh. but it's not traditional No, <laughs> because humanists, not. they, they, they taught Latin as a living language. Yep. Um, so I, I think that uh, uh, this so-called traditional method is in, in fact really recent, yep. but because our teachers um, learned with that method, they think it is this is yep. the only one possible. Yes, so, it's a 20th century um, invention. The, the the traditional way is a 20th century uh, invention. Definitely. Yes, I, I think it has to do with the Gramsci um, yep. um, reform about uh, Italian schools. I, I'm not sure about that, but yes, it's mm. it's really recent. Recent, yep. and uh, yes, the problem is in Italy, but not only in Italy there is still a big resistance uh, from uh, many teachers who um, perhaps know about uh, the Orberg me method, but don't want to, um, to discuss the method yep. they're used to. Maybe they, they don't even want to relearn because yeah. Um, let's face it, it's not easy to uh, restart and uh, relearn oh. about something you have learned uh, some way. Yes. 
Uh, however, I can see that uh, things are slowly changing. Yep, they are. There are more and more teachers in Italy who are starting to use uh, those methods. And mm. unfortunately, um, it's, uh, we, we can see that more often out of the scholastic systems than in school, but that's already something. And uh, yep. I can see that around the world, uh, for instance, in the United States, these methods, so Orberg, but also comprehensible input and uh, all these methods that yeah. are alike are more used, uh, I think, because the study of Latin and Greek, uh, of course, is much more optional and uh, elitarian mm -hmm. outside yes, Italy. It is. Even mm -hmm. if it, in Italy um, there are not so many students who decide to take up uh, Latin and Greek, however, it's rooted into our history, of course, and it's much more uh, <clears throat> widespread than in other countries. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. And so also, you... there's a sorry. Uh, also, there's a pressure from from the the upper side because uh, even if a teacher wants to change and wants to use the urban method, he or she uh, simply can't because um, they have to uh, they have to report their progress. Um, for their class uh, by each uh, month, basically, um, and there's a structure imposed by you know the the current uh, state of the school, the Ministry of uh, School and uh, University, mm -hmm. and so they have to follow a specific um, set of um, information they have to pass on to their students, and so if it, if they don't uh, meet the demand of the ministry, uh, it means they are not doing their job properly, and they could get you know um not fired but uh you know maybe their their the headmaster would uh, you know convocate them and tell them well, what are you doing why you're not meeting the demands of the ministry so it's not also uh, always um the teacher's fault but it's also the system itself that's designed to resist change and that's a shame also because in italy we have this uh Esame di maturità, this final yeah. exam, and in the yes. Liceo Classico uh, for Latin and Greek, this is basically a, a translation. Mm -hmm. Latin and Greek. I had Greek. Ah, I had, yeah. <laughs> Me too, I think. Yes, I had. Yeah, and I was Greek. insufficient, so <laughs> <laughs> so I took nine, um, and it's it's like um, maybe a, a, a D, a D uh, mm -hmm. in, a, in a Anglo Saxon word. So yeah, yeah I was bad. <laughs> So teachers feel this pressure to prepare students for translation. Yes. Um, however, they don't realize sometimes that uh, teaching with, with Orberg is not opposed to no. uh, translation. Um, you, the, the main difference is that first with Orberg, you understand what you're reading and then translation is the second yeah. step yeah. in italy and we usually tend to start from translation day one you are yes. presented with a sentence uh, sometimes a difficult one and you are required to find the subject find the verb and uh, start translating but that's not how it works and uh, no, <laughs> we can definitely see not this leads to some <laughs> big mistakes we usually have students who completely mistake um, a, a version they understand yep. uh, if you think <laughs> if you think about it uh, it's the same for other languages too um, in Italy we are uh, one of the worst country in Europe uh, with English and uh, the reason is simple uh, we don't teach it properly at school so I did eight years of English in school and I didn't learn basically anything I learned to speak English with YouTube. Uh, how is this acceptable? So we, in eight years, we can turn someone into basically similar to a native speaker, something like that. Not not quite, but uh, similar to. So um, there's no respect in Italy uh, to linguistics and to uh, cogn cognitive sciences, and we don't pay attention to how we teach things. We just do it as we always did but that's not the way uh, the brain works not the way um you know science works um you know uh, so we just resist innovation that's uh, yeah. that's how it is yeah i was thinking about it earlier 
this is a paradox, of course, because we are not only teaching dead languages, we can yeah. call it them dead languages, of course, but also living languages, we are teaching them yeah. as dead languages. That's really yes. absurd. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so we, we don't know Latin, we don't know Greek, but we don't know English, nor French, nor Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we just know Italian or exactly. we turn to YouTube. That's it. I think for English, at least, things are changing because yeah. now students know uh, English far better than their teachers. Their <laughs> teachers, yeah. The and, yeah. And, and video uh, games. The teachers and, uh, have, have to keep up, keep up in some way. Yeah, it's true. And, and also they use English. That's the key. They use English at home. They use it uh, for video games. They chat. They, they listen. They you know, search for things. They read. They speak. And that's the way uh, a language is supposed to work. Um, I interviewed um, a couple of years ago, um, uh, Steve Kaufman, who is a famous um, polyglot. He learned 20 more and more languages in his life. And he said to me um, a thing that stuck with me. You don't learn a language as much as you get used to a language. So you have to, you know, you have to get used to the way language works and it's just it's not just learning but it's immersing in it is uh, it's um it's a process of you know gradually getting accustomed to to the language and so the only way to do that is um through use 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 you know, communicate yeah so that that's why a channel like yours is so important because you communicate in in the language you want to learn and that's how you learn it. And um, yeah, it's so important, so important. I think you're, you're teaching um, Latin uh, so much better than school is. So it's amazing. So you do an amazing work. Thank you. Yes, and the fact is for Latin, it, it, it is of course difficult to find compelling content because not everyone likes to read uh, Cicero or they don't. <laughs> yeah. yes, they should do. It's yeah. very interesting. <laughs> it's interesting, but sometimes you just want something uh, lighter. And mm -hmm. nowadays we are lucky because uh, there is my channel, but not, not only mine. We have yeah. Latin podcasts, we have novellas, mm, that is books. We have translations of Harry Potter and many other Yeah, books. amazing. So now it is really possible to read and uh, listen to Latin, even if it's not related to the classic world. Yeah. Um, however, I still always um, uh, focus, on, I, I still uh, um, think that reading classics, reading, reading classical writings and texts should be uh, the main goal because otherwise uh, I think so. it's just something we do for fun. Uh, yeah, it's such a, an exercise. Yes. You know, it's a fun one, but, uh, you know, uh, reading the original text of the of some of the best thinkers in the history of humankind should be the main goal yeah. I, I i completely agree with you there there's nothing bad in just wanting to have fun but yeah. yes with latin and greek uh, we cannot uh, do without texts even because all we know about the latin language is because we have some text <laughs> so of course you know. we don't have recordings of seneca you know yeah. and <laughs> otherwise we we, there is always the risk that uh, if we consume only, let's say, modern Latin writings, there is the risk of uh, learning a language that it's not really Latin. Yeah. yeah. Because the language is evolving, of course. Of but, course. And, and that's a good and natural thing but, thing. but if we want to stick to the Latin standard, of course, we have to read classics too. Yeah. And, and also there's some beautiful poetry. Yeah. Uh, in Latin, you know, and uh, reading, I don't know, Catullo or, or, or you know, um, without the the original language, it's completely different. Yeah. It's it's not a thing. It, it um, you know, uh, it's not the same. So for anyone who wants to, you know, really feel the the Latin culture, you should you should read it in Latin. Yeah. yeah. However, I um, <laughs> we just. We, we have been caught up in the conversation. Yeah, already. yeah, sorry. Sorry, I like <laughs> no, to no, speak. That's, that's you, interesting, so. I think. However, you mentioned uh, mnemonics and uh, you yeah. also sell a video course called uh -huh. <laughs> Mnemonica. Yeah. So um, that's 
a field you are passionate about, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. And I want to ask you, how can uh, mnemonic help us in learning uh, languages and Latin in particular? Because yeah. I don't know much about it, but I can mm -hmm. imagine that it, it, it must be helpful uh, yeah. to learn uh, vocabulary and maybe yes. declensions to all we have to memorize, basically. Yeah, exactly. So the thing is, you know, mnemonic uh, techniques and the, the Ars Mnemonica, if you want to <laughs> use the, you know, it, it's very ancient. Uh, actually, one of the first, um, um, you know, text who speaks about uh, mnemonic techniques is um, the Oratore. Uh, you know, and it's it's in Latin, of course, and they use it all the time. I, actually, in the ancient world, they used to, it, it used to be central in the education. Uh, they didn't have access to uh, written text as much as we have. We have, and so it was um, crucial for them to um, learn how to memorize uh, words and you know numbers and and other things. So, the thing is, mnemonic techniques are very effective, very fast, and very useful. But uh, but they sh they often are presented as a you know um, like a magic wand, and they are not. They are uh, tools to learn something very specific. They are tools to memorize details. That's what what they are. Mm -hmm. So uh, every time there's a detail you want to uh, memorize, like for example, the correspondence between a word in your own language and a word in another language, so a new um, a, new, a new word in the language you want to learn, then that's where uh, mnemonic techniques can make make things very easy, very fast. Um, and also to, to how to um, how to do that, uh, you can try yourself. So you you find basically the um, the the basic technique is this: you find. Um, a visual you 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 create a visual imagery in your head uh, of the word in your language and then you create um and visualize a story um with a mental image of the word you want to uh, learn based on the sound um i can give you an, an example um if you want to learn that uh you know in in italian um coltello is knife in, in english and so I, I visualize a coltello, okay, and then I wanted to I want to um, associate with the, the word knife. Knife uh, makes me think about naive. Uh, uh, so I, I imagine someone very naive that goes around with a big knife in his hand or her hand, and that's how I create a link. And every time I see a knife, I think, oh, the one that the naive person had in mind in in his hands and so okay so knife is uh is knife <laughs> yeah that's it's difficult to to do an yeah. english example in english so but but i think you understand so uh for learning um, any language uh, actually or latin every time you have to memorize a new word or every, every time you have to memorize you know uh, conjugations and declinations and, and stuff it's very helpful you find the element you want to memorize you you convert it into a visual imagery you create a link in your head uh, the basic technique is called link method and that's why and um, the advanced one um, is the uh, memory palace or tecnica dei loci uh, you know from uh, cicerone uh, locus you know um and and uh, crucially, that that's an anecdote I want to tell you. Uh, in Italy, we used to say in primo luogo, in secondo luogo, and also in English, that's um, in first place, you know. And it, it's derived from the first locus. Uh, that's great. So the, the, yeah, yeah, because um, yeah, because it's um, it's a technique to memorize long texts. And so when um, you know orator or um, law lawyer like uh, Cicero was. Uh, wanted to to learn a um, speech he had to give so he used this te technique called the technical logic uh, he visualized in different parts of his home and the route between his home and the senate maybe or the or uh, the agora or, or something else um, and every time there's um something peculiar maybe um a particular um place a particular shop particular you know temple something like that he visualized the the keywords from his uh speech inside those uh, spaces those those places and so basically just rethinking about the entire um 
um, oh, what it's called, the entire uh, process and the entire, um, you know, oh. Oh, journey. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can just um, re reimagine the words with it. You find them where you left them and you just remember the correct order uh, in which to say the, the speech. Yeah. So I, yeah, sorry for my English, it's very rusty, but uh, you know, I think I, I, I cleared it. Yeah, so anyway, um, so every time you have to learn vocabulary or other, other details, specific details, a mnemonic techniques can really, really help. And so I think everyone who wants to learn faster uh, a language including Latin and Greek, should learn about mnemonic uh, techniques because it's sped, speed up um, a process that could be very tedious to learn a new word and use it and use it and use it and use it, and use it until one day you finally know it. Uh, but uh, with mnemonic techniques that could hap happen in uh, one minute. And so you, you learn the word, you memorize it, and then it's there. Of course, you still have, that's very important, you still have to use it. Otherwise, um, with time, it will uh, decay, of course, uh, like every memory. But if you remember, but it uh, shortens the, the time needed to, to learn the word. Then, once it's learned, you have to use it. But uh, yeah, speeding up the, the process. Yes. process. I can see this is particularly helpful with, with um, uh, words that are difficult in itself, in themselves. Yeah. For instance, they have a difficult sound, or mm -hmm. they are just long words or uh, words that you simply can't memorize. Um, as for learning words uh, and their meanings, I still think that learning in context is oh, the best. Yeah. But of Definitely. course, uh, there are some words, for instance, um, um, not conjun conjun conjunction that uh, mm -hmm. they are difficult to memorize because yeah. they don't convey any meaning. Any, they they meaning, are just yeah. sound. Yeah. And in Latin, you have all these words that uh, usually get messed up, like autem, etiam, enim. And I think that should be a, a good example. Yeah. Uh, but also, I want to I wanna specify something. Uh, you said learning in in the words in context. That's absolutely the best way to learn a word. But the learning in context and using mnemonic techniques are not op op opposed uh, by any means. Um, you should actually learn in context the word, find the word in a, in a context, try to decipher the word, then use the mnemonic technique, and then use it in context to uh, consolidate the learning. So learning words in context is absolutely the best way to, to learn um, a word. Otherwise, it's an abstract um, correlation. You know, you, you know that correlation, but that um, you have to remember the, the, the brain doesn't know what you're um, memorizing for. Mm -hmm. and so uh, if you want the, 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 the brain to really uh, get used to the, to the new language, you have to tell, tell it that you are learning this for communicating. And so if you don't use, uh, use the word in context, both receiving it and um, applying it, Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're gonna you're gonna forget it. Yeah, it, it's as simple as that. Just another question about the mnemonics mm -hmm. because I can see yep. how you explained how to um, apply some basic techniques to mm. um, to remember words, specific words or their meaning. But uh, how can we use it to memorize, for instance, the declensions, endings, mm -hmm. word endings? Because yep. you can imagine something. About yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's very cool, actually. So um, first of all, the, the first thing is you should really pay attention to what you need to remember. Sometimes um, you think you have to memorize all the declination, and it's not uh, it's not the, the the real thing. Maybe you already know some um, you know some cases. Maybe uh, you don't need to memorize everything. And remember. Um, mnemonic techniques are precision tools. You shouldn't try to memorize everything with mnemonic techniques because it's not going to work and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very hard, um, very tire, tiring, uh, you know, because it, it's, it's very demanding for the, for, the, um, for the brain to use mnemonic techniques. They're very hard 
on a cognitive load side. So you don't want to use everything memorized with, with uh, mnemonic techniques. So first of all, you identify what you need to learn. Maybe you need to learn four or five different um, uh, endings, you know, for that declination or for that uh, conjugation or something like that. Okay, so then you identify, um, you, 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 you try to convert, the, 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 the mechanism is always the same. You convert the, the things you want to memorize, in this case, the, the ending of the word, into an image. As an example, uh, maybe you want to memorize that, um, I don't know, um, you have an ending in am, am, okay? And you don't know uh, how to memorize it because it's abstract. It's two, two letters, am, doesn't mean anything. Okay, but what if you imagine, you know, amare, amo? Uh, and so you want to memorize, um, you want to visualize two people uh, kissing them, uh, kissing each other because they love each other, and so that that am becomes amare uh, to love, and then you imagine someone who loves someone else, and so you use that image and you um, link it to the um, to the case, or you can memorize it in order. If you want to, you know, learn the entire you know chart of, of all the different you know declinations, you, you memorize it in order. You can use the logic technique to to imagine a you know um, a root in your in your home in one um, room. I put you know all the cases for um, maybe I don't know the, the present, and in another room I use the perfetto and some something else. And so you you the 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 really important thing is to transform what you want to learn into an image you can visualize and then link it with a story. And that, that's as simple as that. And you, you have to maybe create a story between all the different endings, if you want to learn them, um, you know, one by other, um, one after another. And so maybe M goes to A. And so A, maybe you imagine your friend, Alessandro. And so you, you create a story. You know, you, you, you use the, the um, the image from an ending to create a story with the other image and you create a, a chain a link that's that's what why it's called link method uh, the method of the the, the chain the, the connection because you you have to first create the visual imagery then um, combine it with a story and then visualize it like it's uh, maybe with your eyes closed like it's uh, happening in real time um, in front of you and the brain uh, makes the connection immediately if you know how to use it. And I remember yeah. using some some method like this one uh, mm -hmm. when I, at high school I had to memorize the meaning of uh, ancient Greek words because yeah. words <laughs> because they um, they were completely <laughs> abstract for me. Oh, and, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You you you, you use the uh, assonance with other words basically, and you can also invent stories. Exactly. Exactly, but uh, it's very important to use um, visualization. Otherwise, it won't work. So yeah, because you are tricking. Basically, what what um, uh, what memory techniques are? It's are they are tricks to to hack your brain into thinking you are experiencing something. You are using your um, personal memory of facts instead of the declarative memory of um, information. So you're, you're, you're telling the brain, oh, this is happening to me. And so naturally the brain remembers better what, what happens to us, our story, uh, anecdotes, um, emotions, instead of you know, information, abstract things. You are, you are using a, um, a different path of memory, of memorization, usually reserved to facts of your life. And so by visualizing it, you are tricking the brain into thinking this is happening. So it's triggering emotions. And so it's relevant for my life. And so I memorize it. Yeah. Because the brain doesn't want to know. You know, you have to think uh, we evolved as hunter-gatherers. And so we, we are uh, designed by nature 
for finding animals to eat and roots to to, to to chew and not definitely not to learn you know conjugations of latin you know that that's not so for the brain all those information are irrelevant yeah. because they don't don't matter to survival they don't matter to you know rep reproduction that it, it's, not, it's not important but if it's something you experience in your life it's um it's a memory of you know something emotional then it's relevant because it's something for you for your life for your survival etc so that's how basically it works thank you that was really <laughs> interesting and um for those who was who are listening if you want to know more about uh, memory and these te yeah. techniques uh, alessandro has plenty of videos about uh, yeah. these on his channel yeah. And lastly, uh, because you don't all, you you um, you teach how to learn all around, have mm -hmm. you got any um, general advice you can give to people who are learning Latin yeah. or any language, in fact, um, yeah. like uh, psychological or yes, yes, yes. planning <laughs> advice you can give? Because yeah, so sometimes the problem is motivation, the lack mm -hmm. of motivation and also the lack of time, time yeah, of management, course. in fact. So what can you tell? Yeah, two things, two, two basic principles. There are uh, the, 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 the basic, basic, basic principles to make your learning effectively, especially in something like uh, Latin. So the first one is called spacing effect. The spacing effect uh, tells us that um, the brain remembers better everything that you can apply it to you know learning dance moves or latin it's the same for the brain the, the the brain learns better and remembers for longer if you distribute and spread the learning into um bigger periods of times so uh you you we were mentioning time management you don't need a lot of time to learn latin you just need um you know to be to be very very constant you need to learn a bit of latin to use a bit of latin each and every day it could be as little as you know 10 minutes or 15 minutes it's better to 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 study latin 10 minutes a day for a week than to do seven hours one day you know so um the spacing effect tells us that we we don't need a lot of time we need uh, a lot of uh, we, so we don't need a lot of absolute time to dedicate to something we want to learn we need a lot of time to distribute our learning in so that that's how it works so um so distribute your your latent practice into small maybe small periods of time maybe 15 minutes maybe half an hour if you, if you have uh, an half an hour to dedicate to to learning latin and that's it but do it every single day or maybe you can you can you know uh, on sunday you can take a break but often often the, the 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 most important part is distributing over a long period of time small uh, study sessions and practice sessions on a long period of time makes a whole all, all the difference so that's that's maybe um and also maybe you can you can use you know um spare time maybe you can listen to a, a video on youtube in latin and maybe trying to interact so uh, it, it's not a question of time it's a question of um you know um planning if you are if you are very careful with your planning and you're very uh, you know deliberate about the spacing effect you don't need a lot of time to learn you just need a const constant application and constant uh, planning you know and for the second uh, principle it's called the testing effect or better um the retri retrieval practice that's the correct name in cognitive sciences um retrieval practice means that um the best way to consolidate uh, an information in the brain in the long term memory is to actually try and find find it in your memory um and use it so you don't need to reread uh, re-listen, rewrite, and doing things all over again. And, uh, you know, I read the text and then I read it once more and once more and once more. That's the, the worst way to learn something. The best way is to learn it, maybe listen to one of your videos or, or read something or read a grammar rule or using, you know, a book like this or something else. And then you close the book, you close the video, you close 
uh, everything you, you have and you try to uh, retrieve the information in your brain. You try to maybe um, create a new phrase, use it, but without looking at the original source. So you, tr you, you do the, this, this, um, this cognitive task of searching in your memory what you need for and uh, find it and use it. That's the best way to, 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 to memorize something. And so practice, practice, practice. That's the, that's the bottom line, but you know. And I works. think it, that's the difference uh, between active and passive learning because Definitely. many people of course can uh, understand uh, a given word if they read them, but then if they have to actually use it, they mm. can't. So yeah. this, this process might of course help. In yeah, and that's, and that's why sometimes you're used to a language but you cannot speak in it yeah. because you didn't um, use the retrieval effect. And so you are a good passive learner, but passive learning is very limited. Uh, now, nowadays, uh, everyone wants to learn a new language by, you know, just listening to, uh, to songs and videos, and, but it, <laughs> it's not enough. Uh, so the, the passive component can complete your learning process but it cannot be the main thing. The main thing is active use and uh, practice. And, you know, I learn something, then I close it and I try to use it as many times as I can in many different ways. If I'm learning a language, I shouldn't be satisfied with using the new word or the new, you know, structure, phrase, uh, grammatical structure I learned one time, you know, or as the teacher told me, I should try to use that in as many ways as I can think of and to build, you know, an entire phrase around a word and try to imagine a real life situation, something like that. Uh, it's, it's very effective. Yes. And actually, I, I teach some of these techniques in my new course, uh, Your Perfect Latin Curriculum, because yeah. It's based on the distinction between active and passive, lear passive learning because for Latin in particular, it's easy to get uh, caught up in this circle of <laughs> passive uh, reading, mm. listening. Yeah. Also because uh, you don't have, um, many people don't have the possibility to speak with of other course. speakers, but that's crucial. And uh, if you can't find, uh, other people to speak to i always recommend to speak uh, by yeah. yourself on, by yourself or, or, or to, write, the, to the video uh, or to the video you can you can try maybe with one of your videos maybe you can try to have a conversation with irene even if she uh, doesn't know you're there but you can you know uh, click the the pause button and try to complete her sentences or try to interact with her yeah that that's yeah. Uh, so it's like a conversation yeah. Uh, even if there's no one there. And also summarizing what I've yeah. ju just uh, listened to, it's mm -hmm. really helpful because Powerful. it requires you to get to those wor words you already exactly. uh, listened And okay. it's an instance of a retrieval effect yeah. because you listen to the video or in the video course or video on YouTube, and then the video ended, and now you have to uh, you know, summarize what you, what you heard, and so you need to retrieve the information. You have to search it, use it, you know, that's a perfect application of the retrieval effect. Yeah. Okay, Alessandro. Gracias plurimas. Thank you. <laughs> Grazie a voi. <laughs> I used uh, Italian because it's the closest thing to, to Latin that I know. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much to, for having me here. If you read the whole uh, Familia Romana, we could have had uh, this conversation in Latin. <laughs> Maybe next time. I can. Uh, let's, let's see. Mm. Speaking in Latin. <laughs> Yeah, we, I, I'll try. <laughs> it's going to be difficult, though. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs> and uh, you listeners, you uh, must visit the channel. And uh, thank you. Alessandro's channel, I will put all the links here. <laughs> See you soon. And I, I also hear that in the future, you might be doing some kind of English videos. So. Yeah, so uh, so I, I, I've been thinking about going internationally, uh, international with my channel uh, for a long time. I really want to do it. It's a matter of you know time and cost, and I should definitely learn uh, better how to speak in English because my English is, is really rusty right now. I, I used to be good, but now you know, two years without using it, so you know, 
<laughs> no retrieval effect at all. <laughs> so, so I'm very, I'm very bad, but I, I, I can get better, and probably in the future I will do something uh, in English too. So that's great news. Gracias plurimas, vale, Alexander. Gracias plurimas, vale, vale. <laughs> vale, vale.